What is up? Welcome back to another episode of the How to Vegan podcast, or welcome to the How to Vegan podcast if this is your very first time tuning in. I'm so glad that you're here today. My name is Kristen. I am the host of this podcast, and today we are going to be talking about some tips for living a more zero-waste vegan lifestyle. So I'll be focusing on giving you some awesome tips for how to start living a more eco-conscious lifestyle by focusing on producing less waste and eating more plants, aka becoming a more zero-waste vegan. A huge shout out to today's sponsor, Osea Malibu. They are the original plant-based results-driven skincare line, and they're an amazing company. Their skincare products are out of this world amazing. So I'll definitely be chatting about them more in a little bit, and I have a little discount code for you as well. So stay tuned for that. Just a little reminder that I do have a $5 healthy vegan starter kit up on my website, which is just kristenpound.com. It includes two weeks of meal plans, more than 20 healthy, delicious, and affordable vegan recipes, grocery lists that go with those meal plans, and more. So head on over to my website. If you haven't been there yet, you can scroll around and check it out and get that $5 ebook. And I get lots of questions asking me how I started my career on this path and how I kind of journeyed away from bartending and serving tables to a career in health and wellness. And the answer is the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, AKA IIN. It's an amazing online program. It's a year long and I highly, highly, highly recommend it for anyone wanting a career switch or anyone who's yeah wanting to work from home, be their own boss, control their schedule and really connect with something that you feel really, really passionate about. So if you're interested in learning more, I will leave a link in the show notes. If you just open up the details on whatever podcast listening platform you're on, you'll always see a link for the full show notes, which will take you to my website. And it includes a link for everything that I mentioned in the show, but I'll also leave a link there for a curriculum guide, a free curriculum guide for IIN. So if you're interested, then click on that and you can learn more. Alrighty, now let's get into today's topic, tips for living a more zero waste and vegan lifestyle. Okay, so let's start with the definition of zero waste, which is the conservation of all resources by means of responsible production, consumption, reuse, and recovery of products, packaging, and materials without burning and with no discharges to land, water, or air that threaten the environment or human health. And that definition comes directly from the Zero Waste International Alliance's website. So if you wanna check that out and learn more about the actual definition, you can head there. But living zero waste essentially means putting a focus on preventing waste. The goal is for no trash to be sent to landfills, to be burned in incinerators, or to be thrown in the ocean. It's really all about working on creating a circular economy instead of a linear economy. So one where everything is kind of reused, repurposed, upcycled, donated, that kind of stuff. Instead of a linear economy where say, you know, we're getting a single use item, single use plastic item, using it, throwing it away, nothing else ever becomes of that product. And the world didn't used to be this wasteful until our culture became really focused on convenience. And so kind of heading into this new idea of zero waste. And when I say zero waste, I'm saying it in like quotation marks because zero waste is really a goal. It's not something that is 100% attainable to always produce zero waste. It's really kind of a goal and idea to try to obtain at some point, but that's not really ideal for most human beings. So now that we're kind of adopting this zero waste, low waste, eco-conscious mentality, we're really just changing our current culture back to what it used to be before this like extreme consumerism took hold of our culture. If you think about it, zero waste is kind of how everybody used to live. They didn't have all of these single use items and these convenient packaging for their foods and things that they're just throwing away without thinking about it. Everything was reused. Everything had a purpose. So this is really just not, it's not an extreme idea. It's just returning back to a way that things used to be. It may be a little bit extreme now in the life that we live, but it really is just kind of returning to a way of life that used to be very common for everybody. 
If you're listening to this podcast, you probably know the definition of the word vegan, someone who doesn't eat or use any animal products. So we're just going to be tying the two in together today because they actually go really well together. People who are wanting to produce less waste and and not harm the environment as much and not contribute to climate change and pollution and the degradation of the environment in general really should go vegan because animal agriculture is so devastating to this planet and it just is causing so many problems. So a lot of people who are zero waste are also vegan. So in today's episode, I'm just going to kind of make sure that we're combining the two and I'll have tips on living both ways, but they really do kind of go together. And if you didn't know, Americans create a lot of waste. And I know I have people from all over the world that listen to my podcast, like all over the world in so many countries. I think over 120 countries people listen to this podcast. So shout out to all my international listeners. I love you guys. But a lot of the stats that I am going to be talking about is American or United States stats. And that's just because that's where I live. And a lot of the research that I have access to or that I can find more easily a lot of the documentaries that I watch and articles I read and stuff are catered to the place that I live. Um, And most of my listeners do live in the United States. So I'm going to be talking a lot about stats and most of them are from the United States. So Americans create a shit ton of waste, like so much waste. It is so sad. Oh, it is so it's such a bummer. We're talking around 254 million tons per year. That's enough to stretch to the moon and back 25 times. And that's just Americans. So reducing waste is so important for so many reasons. We don't want all this shit just laying around the landfills. We don't want all of this toxic waste to be burned and released into the air. We don't want all of this toxic sludge to be put into the rivers and the lakes and seep into the ground. It's just it's really bad overall. And reducing your waste is something that little by little you can work on and you can start to make a really big impact. Even if it doesn't feel like it, you guys know, I always say the ripple effect is so real. It's not just with veganism. It's with anything. If you start producing a little bit less waste, you're going to inspire somebody else to produce a little bit less waste. And it's just going to keep expanding and expanding from there. And the more you learn, the more you're going to do. And every little bit counts. So don't feel like it doesn't because every little bit really does count. And like I said, following a vegan diet already cuts down on waste drastically, but there's still a lot more that we can do as individuals to live more sustainably, especially with the massive environmental crisis that we are now facing. This Something needs to be done. And these tips that I'm going to give you are things that you can do to help on an individual level because our governments really aren't doing shit. And although that is where we need the change to happen, we need our governments to wake up and to do something about it. We need our systems to change. But until that happens, we kind of have to take the matter into our own hands as much as we can and try to do what we can to make that change happen. So I really got interested in this zero waste movement because of veganism. Like I've talked about before in some of my episodes, veganism really helped open my eyes to a lot of things that were going on that I was being lied to about. Like you need meat for protein and you need dairy for calcium. And it's just not true. So it really makes you wonder what else am I being lied to, lied to about? And a lot of the people in the vegan movement are really conscious about the environment. And I started following some awesome zero wasters on Instagram and YouTube and people who are just living a more eco-conscious lifestyle. And it was so inspiring. And so I just really got, I got really into it and I really try to do the best that I can. I'm not perfect by any means, but a lot of this stuff just feels right for me. And if a big part of the reason that I'm vegan is for the environment, then why wouldn't I take more steps to kind of add to that. And so that's what this episode is going to be about. The veganism part as a whole, you know, that is definitely how I live my life on a daily basis. And then some of the other things that you can slowly start to add in on top of living a vegan lifestyle that will definitely help reduce your waste. And when I say a vegan lifestyle, as I talk about in just a minute, it's not eating a bunch of packaged foods and I'm going to talk about how you can be vegan and stay vegan and do it in a much less wasteful way than a lot of people who are vegan or plant-based do it. 
Okay, so before we dive right into the tips that I have for you, just a couple of disclaimers. I do want to say that achieving 100% zero waste isn't truly possible. The bulk goods come in cardboard or plastic, and everyone will always create some amount of trash somehow. So keep that in mind. The terms low waste or ego conscious might be better terms, but zero waste is the term that lots of people use and are familiar with. So that's what I'm going with here. And I totally understand that some or all of these options may not be available to you. And that is okay. We all live in different parts of the world. We might have different medical conditions. We might not have enough money. We just all have different options and abilities when it comes to making choices like these. So do your best with what you have, with what you know, with what your budget is, your health, and what you have going on with your life, and you're going to be off to a really great start. There definitely seems to be a preconception about zero waste and the vegan lifestyle that they're only for people with money or privilege. And full disclosure, sometimes that is true. But that doesn't mean it's always true, and it doesn't mean that there are not some options available to everyone who wants to try it out. And one more thing, I definitely do not do all of the things that I'm about to talk about. I wish I did, but I just don't. Maybe someday I will, but I don't right now. So I don't want you to think that everything I'm about to talk about, I live this way completely because I don't. These are just tips that I've gathered for you guys that you can kind of pick and choose what sounds right for you. And just to kind of have some inspiration to know that this stuff is possible and there are people living this way. And you can kind of add in things again as you see fit for your lifestyle, your budget, your health, all of that stuff. Okay, so now for the tips that I have for you on living a more zero waste vegan lifestyle. Okay, so the very first tip that I have for you is to educate yourself. Do as much research as possible on these issues. Watch documentaries like Cowspiracy, The True Cost, A Plastic Ocean, Broken, A Recycling Sham, which I just watched a few days ago and it's such a bummer and an eye-opener at the same time. You can also look stuff up on YouTube. You can read articles, join environmentally focused Facebook groups. Knowledge truly is power. It's our responsibility to know so that we can make educated decisions, not just for us and the world we currently live in, but for the future of this planet and for future generations. Most people don't realize that plastic can only be recycled one time ever and will never decompose completely, while glass and cardboard can continue to be recycled over and over again. And it's not just packaging that is the problem, it's food waste as well. Food waste is a major, major, major problem. 40% of the food in the United States is never even eaten. 40% of the food is never even eaten. That is just awful. Like, that is just awful. If the United States wasted just 5% less food, it would be enough to feed 4 million Americans. Not the 40% that's wasted and never eaten. If it just wasted 5% less food, it would feed 4 million Americans. The average American throws away about 209 to 254 pounds of edible food each year, and 30 to 50% of the food that makes it to the supermarket shelves is thrown away in the homes of the people that purchase it. So food waste is such a big issue. There's so much food just being thrown away and wasted, and there are definitely some things that you can do to avoid that, which I'll talk about in a minute, but it really is packaging, it's food waste, it's it's everything that people are throwing away that that really doesn't need to be thrown away. So being mindful of that and educating yourself on these facts and knowing where your trash is going, knowing where your food waste is going, really just gathering as much knowledge as possible is the first step in all of this. So again, watch some of those documentaries that I listed earlier. There's a lot more out there. There's YouTube videos. There's so much information out there. So just, you know, take five minutes a day, maybe with your morning coffee or tea and read an article or maybe one weekend night out of your week, watch a documentary, invite your friends over, make a healthy vegan meal. Like let's educate ourselves on these issues and let's watch a documentary because they're so eye-opening. And until you really know what's happening and how it's affecting us, it's really hard to get the motivation to want to live a more zero waste lifestyle. So educating yourself as always is my number one tip. Do the research. Listening to this podcast is a great first way to kind of introduce yourself to this. If you haven't really 
been introduced to it before, but don't stop here. Don't just take my word for it and say, well, all this stuff is bad. I need to do it. Like get into it, dive into it, and you'll really have a solid reason and understanding really as to what is going on and why it's so fucking awful and that something needs to be done about it and you can do something about it. Another good way to get really good information without maybe sitting down and watching a full documentary or reading an article is to follow some zero waste or low waste Instagrammers and YouTubers. They always have awesome tips and tricks and they're so inspirational. Some of my favorites include Sustainable Sabs, Sustainably Vegan, Shell Bizzle, and Trash is for Tossers. I'll leave a list of all of my kind of like inspirational go-tos in the show notes. So, but definitely just start following some of them on Instagram and they'll start tagging some other people who are doing the same thing and you'll just start following more and more of them. And then pretty much my entire like Instagram feed, both like the actual posts and the stories consists of people who follow a vegan lifestyle, like a healthy vegan lifestyle and people who are zero wasters. And I just gather so much inspiration and learn so many little tips and tricks and educational little nuggets of wisdom throughout my day just by following these really awesome people. So again, I'll leave a list of these awesome humans in the show notes for you so you can go follow them yourselves. My next tip is to start slowly and go from there. Living this way is usually a slow progression, especially if you want to be like completely zero waste as possible. So don't think that you need to go vegan overnight and don't think that you need to go zero waste overnight and don't think you need to go both vegan and zero waste overnight because that's honestly just not realistic. That's so overwhelming. A lot of these things take time to learn and master and understand and doing those things, learning, mastering, understanding can make this a lot less overwhelming. So take it step by step, take it day by day, week by week, month by month, and year by year. Because a lot of this can honestly take that long to figure out and adjust to. And with each step that you take, no matter how small it may seem, you should be proud of yourself for taking it. Even just switching to reusable grocery bags is an awesome step or switching from plastic straws to a reusable straw. So although the tips that I'm about to give you might seem really overwhelming and a lot to digest, just remember that they're just tips and things to keep in mind. And maybe you want to strive for these things someday. Maybe you don't. Either way is completely fine you do you. So start slowly, go from there, maybe pick one thing a week, one thing a month, or whatever feels good for you. If you're brand new to veganism and brand new to this whole zero waste concept, then don't worry too hard about being perfect in any sort of way. Maybe go vegan first and get a reusable straw. You know, maybe maybe that's all you want to do at first. Maybe you are already vegan and you want to create a little zero waste kit, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. There are things that you can do in your capacity that will work for you, that won't work for other people. So don't judge yourself. Don't compare yourself to other people. Do what works best for you and go at whatever pace works best for you because that's how it's going to be sustainable and that's how it's going to work and not just be something that you try for a little bit because it's trendy and then be like, this is too hard. I'm not doing this anymore. I'm going to go back to eating animal products and I'm just going to keep consuming things the way that I was, which is not helpful at all. So you really want to just do this at a pace that feels really good for you. My next tip is to avoid single use items. So things like plastic water bottles, coffee cups, plastic utensils, to-go containers, plastic straws, etc. These are all things that just get used once and thrown away. And that is the worst. So if you're going to start anywhere, try to avoid single use items. And you can bring your own reusable options or have your own reusable options with you at all times to be able to say no to these things and have something else that you can use instead and something else that is just reusable. It's not going to be something you you use once and throw away. So you can get a reusable water bottle. You can get a reusable coffee cup or you can just use a little mason jar with some rubber bands wrapped around it like Sustainable Sabs does so her hand doesn't get hot. You can get some bamboo utensils or you can just Bring some of your metal utensils from home and keep those on you if you don't want to buy something new. You can bring your own Tupperware with you when you go out to eat. You can bring metal, bamboo, 
or glass straws with you instead of using plastic straws. You can have some reusable Ziploc bags for using at home. I have like ones that are made out of silicone. So instead of using Ziploc bags, I just have about eight to 10 of these silicone bags and they're awesome. You just wash them when you're done and reuse them. Instead of using your regular paper towels, you can swap those out for reusable cleaning rags. Repurposed is best. Repurposed is really best for as for all of this. As many things as you can repurpose instead of buying new is ideal. So if you have like some old shirts or some old towels, you can cut those up and use those as paper towel kind of rags and then you can wash them and reuse them. So it's best to do that instead of going out and buying a bunch of new things to use instead. But if that is your only option, then that's fine. It's better than continuing to buy paper towels, using them and throwing them out. Reusable cloth napkins are great as well. Instead of using paper towels or paper napkins, getting some reusable cloth napkins are awesome. You can find them at thrift stores. You can make your own from old t-shirts that you have. There's lots of options when it comes to finding them already, like again, repurposed or at thrift stores. But if you want to, you can purchase them. We got ours as a gift, like my mom bought us ours and we have six of them and that's what we use for napkins. We use them, we put them in the dirty clothes and the laundry and that's what we use for napkins. And it's a lot nicer than like wiping your face with paper and you're not contributing to garbage in the landfill. So it's awesome. The next tip I have for you is to create your own zero waste kit. I have a video on my YouTube channel where I talk all about what's in my zero waste kit. So if you're interested in scoping that out, then go head on over there. I'll leave a link in the show notes for sure. Or you can just type in Kristen Pound on YouTube in the search bar and my channel will pop up and you can subscribe and check out all my videos there. But some of the stuff that I have in my zero waste kit are the things that I mentioned earlier, you know, like my reusable coffee mug and my bamboo utensils and my cloth napkin and my straw and that kind of stuff. So definitely find what feels good for you. You can go search for inspiration on YouTube, like what to put in your zero waste kit, or you can just think of ideas that that you might use a lot and keep those with you at all times. And the key is to keep it with you. Like you can create a zero waste kit and leave it at home and that really doesn't do anything. But if you bring it with you at all times, say, you know, you're out and you decide you want to get a drink that you weren't thinking you wanted to get, you have your cup that you can use instead of getting a single use cup. Because those coffee cups that you get like the single use coffee cups, if you get your coffee to go, they seem like they're recyclable, but there's like a little plastic waxy coating on the inside, which makes them not recyclable and they have to just be thrown away in the garbage. So I kind of have a rule where if I don't have my coffee cup with me, or if I don't have my reusable straw or anything like that, I try to just say no. I'm like, oh, a coffee sounds really good. Oh, I don't have my re- reusable coffee mug. I can't get one. And then it helps me to remember that I need to bring my zero waste kit with me. And yeah, it can be a little bit bulky, but find yourself a cute little backpack or something like that, or keep it in your car if you drive around. And the benefits, I promise, far outweigh the negatives because then you're not harming the environment. And it honestly actually also sparks up really cool conversation when you're, you know, hey, can you put my food in this to-go container instead of using your to-go container? maybe the person working there will be like, yeah, why do you want this? Or maybe someone in line will see you use your reusable coffee mug or straw and will spark up a conversation. And again, that's where that ripple effect can come into play when you're like, oh yeah, you can't recycle those coffee cups. So I just bring my own or yeah, these straws are really damaging to the environment. So I just have one reusable one and I just wash it. So creating a zero waste kit, I just use like a little like grocery bag tote, like a cloth grocery bag, um, tote thing, reusable grocery bag, I guess is what it's called. I put all my stuff in there. And then as often as I remember, sometimes I do forget, I try to have it with me. It's got all of my essentials in there. So I don't need a, a, you know, a paper napkin. When I go out to eat, I have my cloth one. There's lots of little things that you'll start to notice once you start living this way that you'll be like, wow, I was wasting a lot before people waste a lot and it's not necessary. Like I can use the stuff that I have, wash it, and then reuse it again, which makes so much more sense. And again, it's how people used to live. So create a zero waste kit. Again, I'll leave a link to what's in mine in the show notes. And it's just best to use things that you already have on hand instead of buying new when you're creating your zero waste kit. So keep that in mind as well. 
My next tip is to shop wisely. So plan your meals. Don't just like go to the grocery store like I have no idea what I'm going to eat this week. I'm just going to get a bunch of stuff and figure it out. So plan your meals, make a shopping list from that meal plan. And then when you go to the store, you know exactly what you're getting and why you're getting it. Because again, there's so much food waste that just comes from people shopping and then throwing things away because they never eat it. So to reduce that, you can just plan your meals, use a shopping list, and then use everything that you have because you already know how you're going to use it. You should really try to avoid like super deals such as buy one, get one free because that can just make you buy things that you don't need. And a lot of stuff that are in those deals are packaged goods and try to avoid impulse buys. So just seeing something and be like, oh, I want that. That looks good. Like, oh, that chocolate bar looks delicious. Or I don't need that, but I want it. A lot of that stuff, again, is going to be things that are packaged in things that aren't recyclable or that you really, again, don't need. So try to avoid buying things that's that aren't on your list. Is that always possible? No. But keep that in mind that just try to stick to your list and remember why you're doing this and avoid those impulse buys. Focus on eating whole foods. So things like fruits, vegetables, legumes, whole grains, anything straight from the ground is best. And it's typically a lot healthier and typically a lot cheaper too. So that is, you know, not only is it healthier and cheaper, but if you're buying it straight from the ground, it shouldn't need packaging. One of my biggest pet peeves and Trader Joe's is the worst is taking things like red peppers, you know, which have like, they don't need to be in packaging and they're like wrapped in plastic. Or I've seen people post pictures on Instagram and stuff of like bananas wrapped in plastic. And it's just like, what are you, bananas are already packaged in their own little packaging. Like what are people doing? So try to find things that just grow straight from the ground and don't need a lot of packaging to be sold to you. And again, this stuff is typically healthier and cheaper too, which is just another added benefit. Try to buy the ugly slash funky looking produce if you can. This produce is usually perfectly fine and it would probably otherwise go to waste if it's not snatched up by you because people when they go shopping want that like perfect looking apple or perfect looking carrot when in fact not all apples and carrots are grown looking perfect. So a lot of times people never buy that stuff and the grocery store just has to throw it away. So try to buy that stuff when possible. It might look a little weird, but it should taste the exact same. And that can be another way to just really help reduce food waste. Bring reusable shopping bags with you when you go to the grocery store. If you're the kind of person that needs to keep them in your car so you don't forget them, unload your groceries and just go right back out to your car and put them in your car and just have them with you when you go shopping. It's just a habit for me now to grab those before I head on out the door. So after a while, it'll become something that you're kind of accustomed to, but bring reusable shopping bags, even if this is the first thing that you do. So you're not getting your groceries in plastic bags because plastic bags are the worst. Like they're so bad. So try to get ones that aren't made with plastic. So you can kind of tell like those ones that are kind of stiffer and look a little kind of like shiny or whatever. I think Trader Joe's sells them. Those are not like the best. Try to find ones that are just cloth. You can probably find them at thrift stores. You can ask maybe friends or people in your Facebook community like, hey, does anyone have any extra reusable shopping bags? I'm trying to, you know, cut down on my waist. See if you can get some gifted to you. There's lots of ways to go about getting these, but if you have to buy them, try to buy ones that are just completely cloth. Like don't get the plasticky feeling ones. But having these on hand is so helpful, even if you're going shopping like at the mall or not just for groceries, anywhere where you're gonna get plastic bags, bring reusable shopping bags instead. Try to remember to bring reusable mesh bags for produce. And again, try to find some that aren't made with plastic, cloth is best. I have a few of these and they're perfect. Another huge pet peeve of mine is seeing people rip off those plastic bags for produce and putting all of their produce, no matter what it is in those, like their bananas, those don't need to go in a plastic bag. Your oranges, those don't need to go in a plastic. There's so many things I see people put in those like little plastic bags. I think just because they're used to it, like, oh, it's produce, it goes in here. But for, there's a certain things that I definitely like to put in those. So things like parsley or cilantro or kale or like a head of lettuce that's a little bit like watery. I like to put them in kind of like those cloth bags or things that I just want to kind of group together. So if I'm buying like a bunch of oranges or something like that, a bunch of potatoes, it can be easier to put them in there. But if I forget these mesh 
produce bags, I just don't use bags at all. I just set my stuff straight into the cart. So say I'm buying 10 potatoes, I just put them into the cart like that. If I'm buying a couple of bunches of bananas, just set them in the cart. If I'm buying a couple of bunches of kale, just shake them off, get some of the like loose water off of there and set them in the cart. And you don't need those plastic bags at all. You really don't. But for some things I like to have them. And so I use mesh bags, reusable mesh bags for produce instead. And again, you just come home, you wash them if they need to be washed, you put them back with your your reusable grocery bags. And then the next time you go to the store, you have everything and you're ready to go. So I would definitely recommend trying to find some of those because I love mine. I love mine. And again, they're like another huge talking point. People see me putting my stuff in there and they're like, what's that? Why aren't you using these plastic bags? And then it can be an opportunity to talk about how harmful they are to the environment, how they're really just single use and they get thrown away and how easy it is to use reusable ones. And I'll leave a link to some of the ones that I think are best. Again, a lot of the stuff that I talk about, I'll leave links to in the show notes. So if you're wondering like, oh, what reusable straws should I get? Um, Or anything like that, I will definitely try to leave as many links as possible in the show notes. So I'll find some reusable cloth produce bags, like mesh cloth produce bags, link for those in the show notes for you too. So you can kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about. My next tip is to buy in bulk. This is huge. Buying in bulk is so helpful and it can just be such a great way to cut back on waste. So bring reusable cloth bags for bulk goods. Some stores are totally chill with this and others will have no idea what you're talking about when you're like, hey, can I use these reusable cloth bags for your bulk goods. Some of them might be like, what? I don't, why would you do that? Just use the plastic. And some people will be like, oh yeah, we recommend doing that. And they're just like these cloth bags. I think I got mine as a gift um, for Christmas and they have like the weight of the bag on the outside on a little tag. And that way you can just fill up everything that you would normally put in those little plastic bags for your bulk and you can use those instead. So I use mine for things like beans and dried pasta and nuts and seeds and raisins and anything like that. I will use my reusable cloth bags for. And then you just write the little number and they just ring them up like normal. And they should take the weight of the bag off for you. So just maybe remind them like, hey, the weight of the bag is on the side. So if you can, please take that weight off. One of the grocery stores that I go to, they can't do that. They're like, we don't do that here. We can't take the weight of the bag off. So we don't charge you for the weight of the bag. And I'm like, that's fine. I'd rather pay a little bit extra than use plastic. But again, you need to do what works best for you. But it doesn't hurt to ask like, hey, the weight of the bag is on the outside of the bag. Please deduct that from the price if you can. And if you don't want to buy new like reusable cloth bags, you can even make your own from things like old t-shirts or pillowcases. If you have a sewing machine, that is ideal. Or you can find someone who has a sewing machine that is ideal for sure. And, or you can hand sew them. I'm sure I don't, I'm really bad at sewing. So I'll leave some links on how to do this in the show notes for sure, because you can totally make your own. And again, upcycling, repurposing things that you already have is so much better than going and buying new things to start the zero waste lifestyle. So you can totally make your own as well. Bringing some jars, like some glass mason jars or repurposed jars, like your old peanut butter jars or pasta sauce jars or whatever, is great for things like flour or liquids or things that can't go in cloth bags, like my nutritional yeast. And yeah, if I'm getting any like all-purpose flour or peanut butter, things like that that you can't put in a cloth bag, bring reusable jars. And so you just want to make sure that when you get to the store, you have an employee there tear them before you fill them. So you just want to go up and say, hey, I'm going to fill this up with peanut butter. Can you just tear this? And they'll put the weight of the jar in usually tape on the jar. And then when you ring it up, when they when it gets rung up, the person can subtract the weight of the jar from the price. So you're not paying for the jar. And again, some places will do this. Some places won't. So the place I have to pick certain specific places that will do this when I buy this stuff, because the weight of the jar can be a lot heavier than the weight of a bag. So that certain grocery store that I go to that won't take the weight of the bag off. I don't use my reusable jars there. I even think they said that that's, they won't let people do that because of like peanut allergy stuff, which makes sense, I guess. But um, the co-op here, 
Whole Foods, we have a zero waste store now. They will all totally let you bring jars. Just make sure you up at the front or one of the employees have them tear it so you're not going to pay for the price of the jar. But bringing reusable cloth bags, bringing jars, totally such a good way to just repurpose what you have, wash it when you get home, and then it's good to go and ready to go for the next time you need to get groceries. And you're not just using those single-use plastic items that just get thrown away. And if you can't buy in bulk, I know there's some stores in some places in the world and some places in the United States. I mean, there's lots of places that just don't have the option of buying in bulk. And that's totally okay. Hopefully it'll keep spreading and more and more people will do it. But I know there's a lot of places that don't have an option for bulk at all. So if you can't buy in bulk, then buy in the biggest amount possible to save on packaging waste. So I've seen places have huge bags of rice, like huge, huge bags of rice. Buy that if you can, and then just pull from there as you need it. Buy the biggest bags of beans that you can and pull from there as you need it. So try to buy the biggest amount that you can to cut back on the packaging waste. My next tip is to learn about stores in your area that support zero waste or low waste shopping. So that kind of goes along with what I was just saying. Farmer's markets are awesome. That is, if you have a farmer's market in your area, like stop there first because they don't put their food in packaging. At least they shouldn't, at least not that I see. They usually don't even have stickers on them because those stickers are wasteful. That's something you have to peel off and throw away. So shopping at a farmer's market is the way to go. You get to know like your the people growing your food and it's local and it's just that is the way to go. So if you have a farmer's market, if you have access to a farmer's market, try to shop there as much as possible. And then try to find stores in your area that have bulk bins, um, like bulk home goods stores, etc. And you can just call around and ask. You don't have to drive there or walk there or bike there or use public transportation. You can just call. You can just get on your phone and call and say, hey, do you have bulk bins? What's your policy on bringing your own reusable bags? Try to find stores in your area that are stoked on also helping cut back on waste and try to go to those stores and support those stores as much as possible. Okay, so talking about sustainability and being eco-conscious and eco-friendly, I'm going to chat a little bit more about Osea. They're the original plant-based results-driven skincare line, and I am just loving everything Osea. I have several of their products. One of my favorite things about their products is that they come in glass packaging, so like glass jars and glass bottles. And so that just really feels good. They're totally reusable. Like as soon as I'm done, I'm going to repurpose mine for different things and they're not going to just be thrown into the garbage. So they're really, really conscious about how they source their ingredients. They're really conscious about their packaging. When I get their products in the mail. It's not just a bunch of plastic and all this wasteful stuff. They're so mindful of how they're they're packaging their stuff. So if you're interested in finding a really good face wash or a face lotion or like an anti-aging serum for your hands, whatever it may be, definitely check out Osea because everything that I've tried from them is really nourishing and purifying and it makes my skin look plump and nice and firm and makes it look really glowy. I just love their products so much. I didn't realize how important it was to use actual quality products instead of just like the cheap drugstore products, which I thought was like, what's the difference? There's a difference. My face looks so much better than it ever has. My skin feels great. Their products smell great. My blemishes and breakouts have reduced dramatically. Everything is non-toxic. It's all plant-based and they use vegan ingredients. Everything is really responsibly sourced, very eco-responsibly sourced, which is so important to me. And I'm assuming it's important to anyone listening to this episode. I'll leave a link in the description. You can click on that. It'll take you straight to their website. You can kind of peruse around and see what they have. And if you're interested, use the code HOWTOVEGAN at checkout and you will get $10 off your first purchase of $50. So you can also just click on the link in the show notes and the discount will be automatically applied. So highly recommend. Check Osea out. They're amazing. An amazing company. They care about the environment. They care about what goes into their products. And I have a feeling that you will love them. You'll love them. I'm just telling you, you're going to love them. Trust me. Okay. So my next zero waste vegan tip that I have for you is to learn when food actually goes bad. So those use by and best by dates are based on the manufacturer's suggestions for peak quality, and they can cause people to throw out food because they think that it has gone bad when in fact it's still totally consumable. So what I like to do is I say go by the smell and the way it looks 
instead. So instead of just like looking at the date and being like, eh, it's old, throw the whole thing away, including the packaging, which is awful. If it can be recycled, please like compost the food if possible and then recycle the packaging. Throwing food away in the packaging is so awful, especially, oh, it just drives me crazy. So many of these things are my pet peeves now, which again, years ago, it wasn't. I was just like, oh, throw it away. It's old. <laughs> but the more you learn about this stuff, it's like, ah, oh, these little things that you can do make such a big difference. So what I like to do is to go by the smell and go by the way it looks. So you can just pop it open. If there's clearly like mold or discoloration, do not eat that shit. If it smells weird, if it's just not smelling right, then, then get rid of that. But a lot of times, like it's the day after these use by dates and most people are like, yep, garbage, when really they're completely fine. So my rule of thumb is just go by the smell and the way it looks instead. I've never gotten sick from my food, especially because I eat plant-based foods. You know, it's not like yogurt with animal pro or milk or meat. That stuff, like you probably should go by those use by dates because ugh, that stuff is rotting flesh and animal secretions. And that's you probably want to go by the use by date on those, but these are plant-based foods. These are things that don't have these icky animal rotting dead corpse issues. They're just plant-based foods. So that use by date isn't like the date that you need to get rid of things by. It's just, I've heard a lot of people say it's just a suggestion. You know, something might go bad before that date even. And that's okay. Like if you open up something like this has like a week left, but it like smells weird or looks weird, then I would say, get rid of it, recycle the packaging if you can, or if it's something you made at home, compost it, get rid of it, rewash the packaging and reuse it. Um, but yeah, just, just learn when food actually goes bad and don't just like use those use by or best by dates as like the end all be all because it isn't. I, I, it really isn't. So try to like, I have some friends who are just so weird about it. Like they're just like, no, it's this date. I have to throw it away. So try to like be a little bit more open-minded, take a little bit of a deep breath around the issue and try to just maybe do more research around it if you feel comfortable, you know, if you feel uncomfortable listening to me tell you to do this, do a little bit more research around it. And again, do what feels best for you. But that's another tip that I have is don't stress out too much about those because a lot of people are throwing food away that is still totally, totally good to eat. My next tip is to use your freezer. Your freezer is your friend. So freeze leftovers if you won't have the chance to eat them before they go bad. So say you make a big old batch of soup and you're like, I'm not going to be able to eat it. I'll just dump it down the sink. Freeze it, even if it's just a little bit. So the next time you're busy or whatever, you can just heat that soup up and you have a meal. So use your freezer for leftovers. I also like to store my bread in the freezer. Like even if I just buy fresh bread, it's brand new. I just put it in the freezer and then take it out piece by piece as I need it. So if I'm gonna make like a piece of toast in the morning, I just take out a piece of toast and I toast it. Or if I'm gonna make a sandwich, then I'll just take out a couple pieces, um, let them thaw, or what I do is just pop them in the microwave for like 30 seconds and then just make my sandwich. So use your freezer. It's really great for leftovers. And there's, you can store things in there that might go bad, like, you know, bagels or things that sometimes you're like, oh, this has a while before it's going to go bad. And then the next morning you come down to have a bagel and the whole thing's moldy. So to prevent that, just pop them in the freezer and use them one by one. Um, and that has really helped me cut back on bread waste for sure. Another thing that I use my freezer for goes along with my next tip, which is to start composting. I keep my compost in the freezer and it's been so helpful. It doesn't just sit out on my counter and smell bad and look bad and bleh, I'm scared to touch it and take it out. So I just didn't want to use it. Now that I started putting it in the freezer, it's been so, so helpful, but start composting in whatever capacity that you can because food and lawn waste make up 25% of all waste in landfills. And composting can really reduce the climate impact of your foods and it also recycles their nutrients. So instead of just going into the landfill with all the plastic and other shit in there, it can recycle the nutrients to help grow new food. So it's ideal. And if your city doesn't have a composting system set up, one of the simplest ways you can do it is a binless trenching method. So you simply just save all of your scraps, your veggie scraps and everything like that in a sealed container or a kitchen compost bin, or like I do in my freezer. And then you bury the scraps at least eight inches deep in your garden bed. And soon you'll have nutrient rich soil primed for planting vegetables or herbs. So you just bury it down in there and let it sit and it'll totally break down and it'll be super nutrient rich soil. And I know not everybody has a garden bed and not everybody even has a yard, but for those of you do, that do, that's an idea for you. 
You can also try to save little veggie bits and ends to make stock. So I've seen, I've never actually tried this because I think what I actually did try it once, but some of the stuff I saved made the stock taste so bad. There's certain things that you should put in like your veggie stock stuff. And there, like, there's certain things that you shouldn't, I think, what was it? Like maybe radishes or something. And it made it taste super gross, but things like, you know, celery, onions, carrots, uh, garlic, anything like that, anything that's about to go bad or that you have the end scraps of, save those in like a specific like veggie stock section of your compost. And then you can, you know, boil them in water and it makes veggie stock. So that's another little tip for your little veggie bits and ends. If you don't have an actual way to compost, that's something that you can do. But yeah, we are lucky enough in the city that I live in, in Boise, to have started like a composting system. It started a few years ago. We actually have like a composting kind of like garbage bin. It looks exactly like the garbage in the recycling bins. And as soon as my little freezer bowl gets filled up of everything you can compost, I just bring it back there and dump it in there. And then maybe every other week they come and get it and it is taken somewhere where it is composted and turned into nutrient rich soil. So we're really lucky. Hopefully that kind of keeps spreading throughout the country and throughout the world. Um, until then you can compost if you have a garden of your own. If not, then you might just have to throw your stuff away. Or another thing that you can do is see if there's anyone in your area who wants your composted stuff. So you can, again, say, reach out on Facebook, find like an environmentally friendly group in your area and say, Hey, I don't want to throw away my veggie scraps, my fruit, fruit scraps and my coffee grounds does anyone want this? And someone might be like, yes, bring it to me. We'll use it. Or maybe there's like a community garden that might want your composting scraps. So try to find ways, be creative, reach out to the community. If you can't find anything, you might just have to throw your stuff away. That's a bummer for now, but at least you know for the future that composting is something that can be super, super beneficial for the planet. My next tip is to grow your own food. Even if it's just growing some herbs on your windowsill, or even if it's just regrowing your garlic or your green onions, if you, you know, chop up all your green onions, you get down to the bottom, little furry, rooty part, put them in water, they'll totally regrow. But yeah, even just growing some herbs on your windowsill, if you have the room in your yard, try to grow a garden, try to grow some of your own food, even if it's just tomatoes and, you know, zucchini or whatever, or some herbs, try to grow your own food if possible. And again, if it's not possible, then keep this in mind as something that you might want to do in the future. You might want to try to find a space that has room for a garden so that you can grow your own food because that is just such an amazing way to, to again, just be more sustainable and to live in more of like that circular economy instead of that more linear economy that we're really in right now. My next tip, and this is one of my favorites, is to make homemade food. This can really help cut down on packaging waste so much. And then you know exactly what's going into your food. So some things that most people buy out and about that you can actually make at home are things like plant milks. So I like to make my own almond and cashew milk at home. I have a recipe on my YouTube channel for almond milk and one for cashew milk, but I just started like combining them. I really like the combo and you essentially just blend it up. Like you soak your almonds in your cashews or one of one or the other or whatever you can make them out of anything peanuts sunflower seeds oats there's so many different kinds of plant milks out there that you can make but you soak your nuts or your seeds overnight and then in the morning you drain them rinse them pop them in your blender with some fresh water i like to add a date for sweetness a little cinnamon and a little vanilla but you don't have to add any of that if you don't want to and then blend it up for a while and then squeeze it through a nut milk bag which is what i have or you can totally just use like an old t-shirt and it'll strain everything out that's like pulpy and then you'll have plant-based milk that you made at home that you don't have to you know, go buy and then throw away the packaging because those like waxy type jugs or bottles or whatever they are, cartons that those come in are not recyclable at all. So not good. Um, and you can easily make yours at home and then you can save that pulp and you make like things like little like energy balls or granola bars, or you can dry it out and use it for flour and baked goods. There's lots of different ways you can use that pulp. So you don't, so then you're not wasting any of it. But yeah, there's plant milks is a great place to start. Another thing is you can make your own nut and seed butters. You can totally make your own peanut butter at home. It just takes a hot minute in your blender or your food processor, pop them in there, let it go for a while, scraping down the sides totally works. And that way you don't have to go buy your own and it saves you money and you know what's in your food and you made it yourself. Making your own food feels so cool. You're like, oh my God, I feel like 
a person, which sounds so weird. I always say that. I'm like, I feel like a person, but instead of just going and buying all the things I need at the grocery store, I'm like my own little sustainable person making my things at home. I know what's in it. It just feels good. I don't know. I really like making homemade food that like some simple staples that you can buy elsewhere, but you're doing it yourself. It just feels really good to me. Some other things you can make at home are things like vegan mayo. I have a recipe on my YouTube channel for that. Vegan sour cream. I'll leave my recipe for that as well. Um, granola and granola bars, just anything that is packaged that doesn't need to be. So other things, you know, just simple things like rice or beans. You don't need to buy like that Trader Joe's packaged convenient rice that you just put in the microwave. Although it's nice and handy. Yes, you don't need to do that. You can make it at home. You don't need to buy canned beans. You can make your beans from scratch at home. So there's lots of little things that you can do. So anything that's typically packaged that doesn't need to be, try to make from home. And it's not to say that you're going to just do all of this immediately. Oh, another thing is bread. I really want to start getting into making bread. I'm not the best at baking, which is why I've been hesitant, but... I really want to start making my own bread. It's really cheap. Homemade bread is so good. You know what's in it. You can add whatever you want in it. Add nuts, seeds, raisins, cinnamon. I mean, you can make it however you want. And then you made, and then it's not in packaged plastic and you made your own bread. Ugh. I really want to do that. This this episode is really inspiring me to do a lot of this stuff that I haven't been doing and that I that I should be doing. So things that are packaged that really don't need to be, try to see what you might feel excited about making at home. Look up some recipes and start trying some stuff out. My next tip is to bring your own container for leftovers when you go out to a restaurant to eat. So I just have like my glass Tupperware with a little plastic lid and I try to remember if we're going out to eat, I try to remember to bring it so that if I have any leftovers, instead of using their single use, you know, whether it's styrofoam or those like wax lined paper or cardboard looking um, containers, whatever they use is going to be single use because in order for food to stay in it and not seep through, it's going to have like a plasticky lining. So be careful about that. And yeah, you can call ahead to make sure that they'll accommodate you with your request. So you can call and say, Hey, I'm coming in for dinner. Is it okay if I use my own um, container for leftovers? Or, Hey, I really want to get some to go food from you guys. Can I bring in my own containers and have you use them? Some places will say no. Somebody's like, no, it's against, you know, food safety codes and health codes and all that stuff. And that's fine. If that's their business, they can do what they want. But a lot of places will be like, shit. Yeah, that's so dope that you're using that. Like, of course, hand it on over. I'll put your food in here and you'll be good to go. And then you get home, you wash it, you reuse it. You don't need to be throwing shit away. That is just, again, really harmful to the environment. And the same goes with your reusable coffee cup for coffee. You can use your reusable coffee cup for smoothies or any other kind of drink you might get while you're out and about. So just try to bring your own containers for leftovers or things that you might be getting out and about. You can put this in your zero waste kit, or if it's a bigger Tupperware, you can bring it in your car with you or stuff it into your backpack if you know you're going out to eat or whatever. And it's just so helpful because that stuff that they give you, especially those like just single use to-go food item containers are so bad. And try to remember to ask for like, you know, if you're taking food for a takeout, say we don't need any silverware, we don't need any napkins, we don't need any plastic. Um, We started doing this when we were ordering pizza and getting it like delivered to the house. We just said, we don't want any plastic. We don't need nutritional yeast because they give little like those little plastic ramekins of nutritional yeast and red pepper flakes. And they have that little, you know, like that Barbie table that goes in the middle of the pizza um, that is like that white plastic thing to hold it together. I'm like, just no plastic in our order. We don't need utensils, napkins, nothing. And they'll accommodate you. And then they can reuse that stuff for someone else. And it's not just going to go to waste. So just thinking about things in a little bit different way when it comes to eating out, um, getting takeout out delivery, all of that stuff. Just be conscious and try to make um, the best decisions when you can. And oh my God, are we perfect? No. Sometimes we totally forget our pizza comes and we're like, fuck, we forgot to say no plastic and we just got all the shit we don't want. But that's okay. This isn't about perfectionism. It's totally fine. People slip up. This isn't, this isn't about being, uh, again, 100% zero waste. That's impossible. Just try to do the best you can when you can. And that is going to make a difference. My next tip is to start purchasing reusable and eco-friendly products for your bathroom and kitchen. So one of the worst things is toothbrushes. They're just plastic. They get used for a little bit and thrown away. Like I cannot imagine how many toothbrushes are actually in the landfill just rotting 
away, like never going to decompose. Instead, you can get something like a bamboo toothbrush. And that's what we've been using for the last few years. And they're awesome. They're totally awesome. And bamboo is super sustainable. It's really quick to grow and it biodegrades and it's not bad for the environment. So there's things like that that you can make swaps. So the next time your toothbrush is ready to go and ready to get a new one, um, you're going to have to throw that one out, but then make the swap to something more eco-friendly. So check out some bamboo toothbrushes and try one out because they work the exact same and then they're not so shitty for the environment. Same with razors. Disposable razors or regular just kind of razors that people use are plastic and just have to get thrown away. When instead you can use a safety razor or like an old school like metal stainless steel razor and they seem really scary. This is something that I still haven't purchased for myself, but I've heard that they like work really easy and they're great. I don't really, the only thing I really use a razor for right now is my armpits. Um, so I just have been using the same disposable razor for like a year because I found it in the back of my closet and I'm like, I'm going to use this, but I really want to get one of those safety razors. And they're just those old kind of like heavy stainless steel razors. And you just replace the like razor blade for pennies. It's super cheap and you have it for the rest of your life. And then you're not throwing razors into the garbage. So things like safety razors, you can get things like cloth rounds for removing makeup instead of those makeup remover wipes or cotton balls or things that you're just going to throw away. I recently got some of these and I love them. I just like to use a little bit of like coconut oil, put it on this little like cotton cloth round, and then you just take off your makeup and, or you can use it for whatever you would use those like little cotton rounds and stuff for. And then you wash them in the washing machine in a little bag they come in. I should have done this years ago. Instead of those like bath poof things that lather up your soap really well, try using washcloths instead, which are totally reusable and much more eco-friendly. You can find package-free vegan soap. So you're not using like body gels or whatever they are, gel wash, gel cleanser. Um, we just started getting packaged free vegan soap, like soap bars and using that until they're gone and so much better. They have shampoo and conditioner bars. So you don't have to buy shampoo in the like plastic container. I haven't tried this yet. My hair, I don't use shampoo, but my hair is so like curly and kind of on the drier side. So I'm kind of afraid to use a, try a conditioner bar, but I think once this conditioner runs out that I have. I'm going to switch to a conditioner bar because I've heard they work great and that it might just take a little bit of trial and error, but they have these, they're like package free. They kind of look like soap and you just like kind of lather them up and put them on your hair that same way. So those exist for lotion. I just use like a repurposed Mason jar filled with coconut oil. That's just what I use for my lotion. I don't use anything else. I just use coconut oil and it's such a more sustainable option. And then you're not just putting a bunch of chemicals on your body as well. So that's a good easy tip that I have for you. They now have like little stainless steel ear picks or like washable Q-tips that you can use like plastic, I think, or like, I don't know what they're made out of, maybe plastic or silicone um, Q-tips that you use and then wash and then reuse. So instead of just using Q-tips every day, if you're someone who likes to clean out their ears, those things exist now. So that's awesome. We use reusable glass pump jars for our dish soap and our hand soap. And then we just refill them with the bulk stuff at the store. So I just found some, yeah, like glass pump jars and just refill them up once they're empty. Instead of buying toilet paper, which, you know, comes in a bundle all wrapped in plastic, there is a brand called Who Gives a Crap and it's recycled toilet paper. It comes wrapped in paper. So there's different options like that. And again, depending on your budget or where you live, you might want to look into this stuff or not. You can get bamboo brushes for in your kitchen. So instead of using sponges or those plastic brushes or anything like that, they are bamboo. And again, they're much more sustainable and eco-friendly. So you can find those and swap over your kitchen cleaning stuff for those bamboo brushes. And my last suggestion for kind of replacing this stuff out is menstrual cups. If you're a lady and you have your period, then menstrual cups are amazing. They might sound scary. They might sound weird. I have a video on my YouTube channel where I talk all about menstrual cups, but I love mine. It's essentially just like a little silicone cup that instead of using a tampon or a pad, you insert into your vagina and it collects all of the menstrual blood. And then you take it out, wash it out once it's full, put it back up there, reuse it, wash it in between periods. It's so amazing. And it has cut back so much on that kind of waste. So if you haven't tried one out yet, highly recommend trying one out. I think they're awesome. My next tip is to make your own DIY beauty products and cleaners. So you can totally make things like laundry detergent, multi-purpose cleaner, 
toothpaste and deodorant. Those can all be made at home and just stored in repurposed glass jars. So I'll leave links if I can find them on how to make this stuff. I have never made any of this stuff to be completely honest. I really want to start making multi-purpose cleaner because I think it's just like white vinegar and orange peels that you let soak for a while. And I want to start making my own toothpaste because it's just like baking soda and coconut oil and maybe some essential oils if you'd like. But again, if it takes too much time, if it takes too much effort or it's too many random ingredients, then it's not personally sustainable for you and you should seek out another option. But I think it's cool to start making that stuff. And if it works, then why not? Then you're not contributing to those, you know, those laundry detergent jugs and toothpaste tubes and all that. There's so many of those just sitting in the landfill. And if we can avoid that, then why not? So I'm going to start trying to make some of these. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and maybe I'll start kind of like sharing my journey, like making my own laundry detergent and talk about how it goes or something like that. So my next tip is to buy second hand. Americans toss away about 80 pounds of clothing per person every year. Oh, that's so much. Just throwing away clothes. It's so sad. So avoiding fast fashion and cheaply made goods is is so important. This has been one of my goals over the last few years is to just not shop at those places that have really cheap, cute clothes that are in fashion that are going to not be in fashion anymore in like a week because yeah, they're cheap, but that means that the person who made them isn't getting paid enough. And it means the quality is really, really poor. So avoid cheaply made goods, avoid fast fashion. And what I do is I shop at the thrift store. Like I shop at the thrift store for all of my clothes, all of my clothes. And then I have unique things that not other people have. And it's so much more sustainable to shop at thrift stores. And you can shop at thrift, I shop at thrift stores for like everything, our furniture, our pots for our plants, there's books. I buy all my books at thrift stores. Oh, thrift stores are the best. So I would start just like if you're, if you're weird about thrift stores, which I used to be, just start going to them, looking through some things. You can wash your clothes before you wear them. Um, but they're amazing and you can find so much stuff there. So try to change your mindset around that if you're a little bit like weary about it, but avoiding fast fashion is so huge and avoiding just, and just avoiding throwing away clothes is huge. So when you're done with your clothes and you don't want to wear them anymore, you go through your closet and you kind of get stuff, want to get rid of stuff. Don't just throw it away. You can have like a clothing swap, invite your friends over and be like, let's do a clothing swap, bring clothes you don't want anymore. And you can kind of switch and maybe get some stuff from friends, which we've done before. And it's so fun because my friends have the same style I do pretty close to it at least. And so you can find great stuff that way or just donate your clothes to a thrift store and other people will get to wear them, which is awesome. So try buying secondhand. It has been, I love it. Like I just love it. I love thrifting and finding cool, unique clothes. And I always get compliments on it. And like, where'd you get that? I'm like, thrift store, $2. And then they're cheap because they actually are cheap because they were just donated. So buy secondhand when you can. My next tip is to recycle as a last resort. This isn't like something that you should just be like, oh, I'm recycling. I'm doing such good things for the planet because recycling is a sham. Essentially, it's not the best by any means. When plastics are recycled, they're actually downcycled, meaning even when they're reincarnated as toothbrushes or shopping bags or more plastic bottles, the plastic ends up in the landfill eventually, unlike glass or metal, which can be recycled over and over without any degradation in quality. And You may have heard of America Recycles Day, which is a day designated to encourage us to put plastic water bottles into the recycling bin. Guess who dreamed that up? The plastic industry. Recycling really came about because the plastic industry wanted us to keep buying more plastic bottles and didn't want people to think it was bad for the environment. So they're like, oh, let's create recycling so people think that they're doing something good by putting it in this bin, when in fact, it's just really not doing much. So Keep in mind that recycling really should be the last resort that repurposing, reusing, upcycling, donating, all of those things should be the first thing that you want to do with your goods. Recycling should kind of feel shitty. Like when I put something in the recycling, I'm not like, woo, I'm like, damn it. I wish I could find a way to reuse this or I wish that I didn't even buy this in the first place. A really good documentary, it's like a short little hour documentary on on Netflix that you can watch is called Broken, a Recycling Sham. That was really eye-opening for me, Um, but there's lots of information out there about how recycling is just not ideal. It's not the best choice. So just recycle as a last resort and try to do all those other things first, like repurposing, reusing, all of that stuff. My next tip that I have for you is my last tip, and that is don't strive for perfection. Perfection is not the goal. So focus on what you can do rather than what you cannot. 
these lifestyle choices are a journey and we learn from making mistakes. Like that is how we learn. So if you were like, oh, I want to start being more zero waste and then you totally forget your zero waste kit and you have to use a bunch of plastic, like that's okay. It doesn't feel okay inside, but it's okay. This is totally not about perfection. Don't strive for that because if you do, you're going to beat yourself up way too much. You're going to compare yourself to other people or to yourself and you're going to give up, which like I mentioned at the beginning of the episode is not the goal. So do your best with what you have, what you know, your budget and what you have going on with your life. And you're just off to a really, really great start. So all of this might sound really difficult and maybe it is. And some of it definitely is, but the benefits typically outweigh the difficulties of living this way by far. Some of the benefits that come along with living a zero waste lifestyle, aside from just bettering the environment and the world you live in, is that you typically save money. Because if you're going to be making all of these things at home, making your own food, making your own deodorant, making your own toothpaste, saving by not buying all these packaged goods, you're going to be saving money. And it's going to feel good to save money. Since I started living this way, especially thrifting, that has saved me so much money. Instead of buying new clothes, I just thrift for my clothes and it's so much cheaper. So all of these things can really help you save a lot of money. And then you have this extra money to put into savings, to save, to go, you know, on a little road trip or whatever you want to do with your money is what you want to do with your money. But this can totally help you save a lot of money. And it's awesome. Like, I love it. That's one of my favorite benefits of living this way, besides for the environmental stuff, is that I save a lot of money. Another benefit is that you eat better, you feel better, and because you eat better and because you feel better, you're typically happier. And so this has just made me so happy. It's reduced the amount of things that we have in our house, and it just, we live more simply. We don't buy things we don't need. We really think about the things that we buy before we buy them. And all of this has just led me to feel better and to be happier overall and to just not feel so weighed down by consumerism and by just contributing to the waste and just the awful landfill issue and and plastic in our oceans and just all of that stuff that's going on. It just feels good to not be contributing to that. So I just feel happier all around. And I know a lot of other people who live this way experience the same thing. They're eating better because they're making their food. They're eating more whole foods. They're not just eating packaged processed goods and they feel good which again, just makes you happier. So that's another huge benefit. And another benefit that comes along with living a zero waste vegan lifestyle is that you live in alignment with your values and morals. Like for me, I know that veganism is so aligned with my values and morals. I don't want to harm animals. Like that is just, it's so big for me. And so living that way just really aligned me and made me feel so much better. And then once I started incorporating more of these zero waste tips and tricks into my life, I started feeling even more aligned. Like I was like, oh, this feels better. I feel, like I said earlier, I feel more like a person, which I don't know. I I guess a lot of the convenience things and the way people live just makes me feel so out of touch with who I am and who we're supposed to be as human beings. And living this way just makes me feel so aligned. And so it just makes me feel good. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then try living in your, in alignment a little bit more with your morals and whatever that may mean for you. And you'll totally know what I mean because it's such a shift and it feels so good. So there's, there's other benefits that come with living this way, not just helping the environment. I mean, that's definitely the major one for me, but there are definitely some other benefits that come along with living a zero waste vegan lifestyle. So like I said, a lot of this might sound really hard. A lot of it might be really hard for you, but the benefits are so amazing. So try to incorporate what you can when you can And again, every little thing is going to make a difference. So don't feel overwhelmed by this. Jump in where you want. Keep all of this in mind and just do what you can. And and don't beat yourself up about it if you're not doing as much as you want to because this is all just like a journey that we're on. Like my second tip said, just start slowly, start simply, and you're going to feel good. I promise. And it'll be like that waterfall effect of like, oh, I did this and then I did this and now I can add this and I made my own bread. Now I can do, make my own deodorant and you're just, you're going to experiment. Some things you might try and be like, no, I made my own toothpaste. That's fucking disgusting. I'm not brushing my teeth with that shit. Like, no, that's fine. Like do what you can with what you have, with what you know, with what your budget, with what feels good for you. And you're going to be doing real good. Alrighty. I think that's it. I think that's all that I have to say on zero waste veganism. I could talk forever about like the statistics and all of the horrible things that's happening to the environment because of the waste and all of these things. But I really encourage you to do your own research on that because I don't 
this episode would have been like four hours long if I did that. So I really wanted to give you some like concrete, actionable tips. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you found it helpful. I really, really love talking about zero waste and talking about veganism. And so this for me was such a fun episode. Like I just, oh, and if you guys have any questions at all or have any other tips that I didn't mention or anything like that, come connect with me. Come leave a comment on the YouTube video for this episode or on the Instagram post. Come find me. Let's connect. Join my How to Vegan Facebook group. It's an awesome group and we can connect there. Like I just, I'm so passionate about this stuff and I'm so excited to share this with you guys. So I really, really hope that you found this episode inspirational and helpful and found some good tips and maybe some things that you want to start implementing in your life right away. If you did enjoy this episode, please make sure to follow the How to Vegan podcast on Instagram. It's just How to Vegan podcast. And you can follow my personal account as well, which is Kristen.pound. And if you really enjoyed the episode, then take a screenshot of you listening to the episode and share it on your stories. Make sure to tag both of my accounts and I'll definitely share it because I love when you guys share this stuff with your followers. Please make sure you're subscribed on your favorite podcast listening platform and turn on your auto downloads for this podcast so you'll be able to listen to the new episodes no matter where you are. And if you're loving the podcast, please head on over to the Apple Podcast app and leave a rating and review. It helps the podcast out so, so much. I know a lot of you guys listen to the podcast on Spotify, but if you just don't mind downloading the Apple podcast app, leaving a rating and review for the podcast, it would just be so helpful for the podcast. So if you could leave a rating and review for the podcast, it would mean so much to me. So thank you so much to those of you who have done that. I appreciate you more than anything. I love you guys so much. Oh, and don't forget to share this episode with anybody that you know who might be interested in this information that I put together for you today go ahead share that vegan love it feels good like I always say the ripple effect is so real for the full show notes including links to everything that I mentioned in this episode click on the link in the description of today's episode or you can just head straight there by typing in kristenpound.com forward slash podcast if you have any ideas for an episode please let me know feel free to send me a dm with any questions you might have I love sending little voice message responses when I can And thanks again to Osea Malibu for sponsoring today's episode. If you're interested in trying out any of their amazing skincare products, then click on the link in the show notes and you will get $10 off your first purchase of $50. Highly recommend. Love all of their stuff so much. It's the best. So thanks again for listening to this episode. I truly, truly, truly hope you enjoyed it. This stuff means so much to me. So I hope that you found found this episode inspirational in the least. So thanks again for listening. And I will just catch you in the next episode of the How to Vegan podcast. Peace.